Portugal has only recently become an immigration country since the mid-1970s. Accordingly, the legal framework for immigrants and family reunification was only established after 1981. Over the past 15 years, Portugal has made significant progress in integrating immigrants, including through family reunification policies. Portugal's family reunification policies have been internationally recognized as among the best. The MIPEX 3 report ranked Portugal first out of 31 countries analyzed due to its inclusive definition of family and recognition that living in a family facilitates integration. Portugal fully incorporated the EU Directive 2003-86-EC on family reunification into national law through the Immigration Law 23-2007, adopting all recommended provisions including non-compulsory ones. Portugal did not impose any limitations or restrictions permitted by the directive that would violate constitutional protections and human rights standards. Portugal exceeded minimum requirements in some areas, like not instituting a minimum residency period before applying for family reunification, upholding immigrants' right to family unity. In some cases, Portugal goes beyond the directive, such as not requiring a minimum residency period and allowing family reunification for dependent parents and adult children. Portuguese law also allows immigrants to request reunification for family members already in the country. In summary, Portugal has made impressive progress on immigrant integration, including through flexible and inclusive family reunification policies that adhere to human rights standards. This approach has earned Portugal recognition as having some of the best family reunification policies internationally. Requirements for family reunification Applicants for family reunification in Portugal must provide documentation including proof of family relationship to the sponsor, such as marriage or birth certificates, evidence of the sponsor's income to support the family, such as employment contracts or bank statements, documentation showing adequate lodging to house the family, the sponsor's valid residence permit, criminal background checks on the applicants, the residency permit granted through family reunification can be revoked if there are grounds for cancellation, such as no longer meeting the requirements. Verifying family relationships To prove family relationships, applicants must provide certified documentation, such as marriage certificates, birth certificates, and identification documents. Unmarried partners need evidence of cohabitation, joint children, or other proofs of their relationship. Refugees unable to provide official documentation can submit alternative proofs to demonstrate the relationship exists. If necessary, interviews and investigations can be conducted to verify relationships. Additional proof like legal or medical exams, DNA tests, may be requested in cases of doubt, but are supplemental, not mandatory. Permits can be cancelled if relationships like marriages or adoptions were fraudulent solely for immigration purposes. False declarations or forged documents also invalidate permits. Portugal's Immigration Service, CEF, is tasked with investigating potentially fraudulent cases, while also ensuring immigrants' right to family unity is upheld. Overall, Portugal aims to balance verification of family relationships with avoiding excessive burdens on immigrants. Proving sufficient income sponsors must show evidence of stable financial resources to support the family for at least 12 months. This income requirement does not apply to refugees. Sponsors need to provide proof of means of subsistence, adequate to meet essential needs like food, housing and healthcare for each family member. The reference amount is Portugal's minimum income, which was $760 in 2023. Specifically, the sponsor must have 100% of the minimum income for themselves, plus 50% for each additional adult family member, and 30% for each child under 18. Overall, sponsors must demonstrate income sufficient to avoid the family falling into poverty or destitution. While an income requirement exists to ensure self-sufficiency, refugees are exempt to facilitate reunification after forced displacement. Documents to prove sufficient income The key documents applicants need to present to prove sufficient means of subsistence for family reunification in Portugal include 
employment contract showing the sponsor's salary and duration of employment, pay slips covering the last several months to demonstrate a regular income, bank statements evidencing savings accounts, investments, or other assets to supplement salary, tax returns or other documentation verifying the sponsor's annual income, pension statements. If the sponsor is retired, scholarship or grant letters. If the sponsor is a student, declarations from family members providing financial support, deeds, leases or mortgages proving property ownership. Contrasting legal status for holders of temporary and permanent residence permits in Portugal's family reunification process. In Portugal, there are distinct legal positions for individuals holding temporary residence permits and those with permanent residence permits when it comes to family reunification. Family members seeking to reunify with a sponsor in Portugal are granted authorization for residence with durations mirroring that of the sponsor. However, the specificities differ based on whether the sponsor holds a temporary or permanent residence permit. 1. Permanent residence permit holders. Family members of sponsors with permanent residence permits receive authorization for residence valid for two years. After these initial two years, if the family relationship remains intact, family members have the right to apply for an independent residence permit. 2. Temporary residence permit holders. For family members of sponsors with temporary residence permits, the authorization of residence matches the duration of the sponsor's permit. Additionally, Article 107 of the 2007 Immigration Act outlines exceptional situations that can lead to the issuance of an independent authorization of residence for family members even before the two-year period. Such situations include divorce, the death of the sponsor, formal accusations of domestic violence against the sponsor, or minors reaching the age of majority. Victims of domestic violence are also afforded protection under the 2012 law reform and can obtain an autonomous residency title. Another exceptional provision, Article 135 of the 2007 Immigration Act, prevents the removal of foreign parents from national territory if they have dependent children residing in Portugal. This provision, slightly revised in 2012, Law 29 2012, emphasizes that entry or residence of parents, regardless of their nationality or method of entry, of minors in Portuguese territory cannot be refused if they can demonstrate that the child depends on them for subsistence and education. In essence, the right to family unity safeguards parents, enabling them to regularize their situation in Portugal if they can prove a dependency on their children or if there are pending judicial decisions that might result in expulsion from Portugal. Overall, Portugal's immigration laws provide different pathways and protections for family members of sponsors with temporary and permanent residence permits, with specific considerations for exceptional circumstances. Family reunification requirements for students. To bring family members to Portugal as a student, a valid residence permit as a student is typically required along with adequate financial means to support the family. Proof of family relationships through documents like marriage or birth certificates and compliance with any additional requirements established by Portuguese immigration authorities. Family reunification. Requirements for refugees. Regarding the prospects of family reunification for refugees in Portugal, Decree Law 1598 has defined that asylum granting extends to the partner and minor children. Alternatively, these family members are also eligible for an extraordinary residence permit, which exempts them from the general requisites. Notably, no additional requirements are defined, except those that generally exclude applicants from benefiting from refugee status. Starting from 2007, Refugees in Portugal have been entitled to family reunification as outlined in Law 23 2007. This recognizes the unique challenges that refugees may face and facilitates a more inclusive approach to family reunification. Prioritizing the reunification of refugee families without imposing additional burdens related to financial or housing documentation. The Legal Framework 
Portugal's commitment to family reunification can be traced back to its legal framework, particularly its adherence to international human rights treaties and European Union directives, two key legal instruments that form the foundation of Portugal's family reunification policy are 1. The European Convention on Human Rights ECHR. Portugal is a signatory to the ECHR, which includes provisions protecting the right to respect for family life Article 8. This fundamental right has been the basis for many cases related to family reunification in Portugal 2. The European Union's Family Reunification Directive. The EU's Family Reunification Directive sets out common standards for family reunification across member states. Portugal has implemented this directive into its national law, ensuring that family reunification procedures align with European norms. Case law illustrating Portugal's progressive stance. To appreciate Portugal's progressive family reunification policy, it's crucial to examine case law that highlights its commitment to upholding the rights of refugees and immigrants. Case of Rodrigues da Silva and Hugkamer vs. The Netherlands, 2006. While this case involved the Netherlands, it established precedents for family reunification throughout the European Union. Portugal, as an EU member state, took these principles to heart. The European Court of Human Rights, ECTHR, in Strasbourg, held that family life includes the right of individuals to live together with their family members, and states must strike a fair balance between immigration control and the individual's right to family life. Portugal, in implementing this decision, has shown a commitment to facilitating family reunification, even in cases where the immigrant or refugee's status might be uncertain. Case of Lopez Gomes da Silva versus Portugal, 2000. This case is a landmark example of Portugal's commitment to family reunification. The ECTHR held that the Portuguese authorities had violated Article 8, right to respect for family life, by refusing to allow a father and his children to reunite due to the father's status as an asylum seeker. This decision reinforced the principle that family unity should not be hindered by immigration status, emphasizing Portugal's commitment to upholding human rights in family reunification cases. In summary, Portugal's model for progressive family reunification policy is characterized by several forward-thinking legal provisions. These include a broadened definition of eligible family members, embracing diverse family structures, and reducing waiting periods to prevent unnecessary family separation. Moreover, Portugal offers integration support services for reunited families to ease their transition into the new environment. This approach, driven by a commitment to international human rights standards and European Union directives, positions Portugal as a compassionate and inclusive nation in immigration policy. It is underscored by key case law, such as the Rodriguez da Silva and Hukamer case, emphasizing the significance of family unity, even within the context of immigration control. Portugal's example serves as a guiding light for countries worldwide seeking to develop humane and comprehensive family reunification policies. Thank you for watching, subscribe and comment. Your input matters.